Good morning, traders. This is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com. This is the futures market outlook for the week starting with September 17th. It is 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And let's get started with the E-mini Dow Industrial Average weekly chart. Uh, price closed on Friday at 26,185, trading above the prior week's high and also above this resistance high at the 200 zone. Bull sandwich on the weekly chart suggests that the pattern may have a continuation higher into this prior high of 26,684, and this is on a larger time frame. Let's zoom in on a daily time frame and let's see what we have going on. Definitely a bull, um, a definitely a bull flag uh, that is setting up, and we did have the blast into Friday. We traded above the resistance high of 26,190 and moving towards our trajectory towards the prior high at the 26,684. Keep in mind that the e mini Dow has been weaker than the rest of these uh, e minis. It is the only index that has not made a new high since the high that was set on January 29th. Uh, definitely looking higher. We also rolled into the new contract, so right now we're trading December contracts. Uh, but on Friday, we're left with a doji. So things are going to be a little bit, um, I would say, double, a double, like a double-edged sword. If the price should break below 26,100, and this is going to be my line in the sand, we may be looking for a continuation back into the support level at 26,000. And then we're going to see how the price handles this area. And if it's going to get rejected, we may have another leg lower back into the support at the 800 zone. If the price is going to stabilize at this level at 26, and this is the line in the sand, the 26,200, meander around this area and project higher, then we have other tradable, we have another tradable void, a projection into the 26,331. So we do have a, a room to continue higher. So at least uh, at least 200 to 200, uh, uh, 250 points from now on, a, a tradable void, and even beyond that, 3331, all the way into to a 26,377 zone. So we are looking bullish in the mini Dow. It's actually pretty nice um, uh, sandwich that we have onto the weekly charts. Let's move on to the e-mini S&P 500. And uh, we're going to start off with the weekly charts. And uh, let's just zoom in a little bit here. Weekly chart, we have just completed a bowl sandwich. Uh, we do have the support from the weekly chart at 28.63. We have a prior high at 29.1705, which is uh, 0.5, I'm sorry, which is uh, a new all-time high that was established on the week of uh, August 27th. We have a really nice pop into this area, but yet did not erase the prior high and set a new high, but definitely we're setting up for a bullish week. We're gonna see how things are gonna pan out this week, but uh, now the market is being closed. We're looking for a strong, pretty strong, a pretty strong continuation higher based on our um, higher time frames. Daily charts, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. You could see that the E-mini S&P 500 has uh, broken above the 2880 zone. 2880 zone has become right now an area of support for current price action. It is uh, the area from which we have reversed into minor support from this minor support zone, projecting higher, but not yet taking out the prior high, all time high, 29.17.5. Zooming in, we also have a doji uh, at 29. We finished the uh, we finished on Friday at 29.11.25, and 2900 right now seems to be the line in the sand. If we manage to hold 2900, we st we're still going to be looking bullish for the rest of the week, and we still look bullish for a continuation higher to the following targets. Obviously, one of the first targets that we're going to go for for day trading obviously 29.17.5 which is the all-time high which represents that resistance but also i want to mention the fact that because we have uh 
uh, we have consolidated here and we have reversed at this area of minor support derived from that prior all-time high, things are looking uh, favorable for a breakout. It just means that it really wants to digest this prior high and explode to the uh, to the uh, to to the upside. Further targets, and these are immediate targets are 2922.25 and then there is a tradable void to 2943.39 and we still have another projection at 2975 so we have a lot of room for an expansion higher all right let's move on to imani nasdaq imani nasdaq has been a little bit choppy and then we're going to view, review some intraday time frames for uh for immediate action all right, so uh, let's move uh, to the weekly chart. The weekly chart actually did not complete the bull flag. We still have a, a room for a progression higher to 76.90. Uh, right now, the line in the sand is this 7,500. We have been gravitating and oscillating around this number for quite some time now. Uh, the price was caught by the 10 EMA again on the weekly chart and projected higher. So we're going to be looking for a continuation higher. If we blast over 76.27, we may have a chance of a completion all the way into the 7700 and then explode further to the upside. So we're still looking bullish, not as bullish as the mini Dow and the mini S&P, but still uh, working on that pro progression higher. Let's move on to the daily chart. Daily chart, um, we had the pullback into the 50 simple moving average. We had the really nice reversal. Uh, we had trouble at this prior pivot high, this resistance that now created selling pressure for this price. That's why we had this uh, indecision day here uh, and topping off at the 7540 zone and then rotating going back higher but still friday we did not manage to break above the prior high and we did have the news on friday that stalled the price the market reacted but uh when we're going to revisit some intraday time frames i'm going to show you why i think we are still looking uh quite bullish for the following week all right let's move on to russell Okay, and let's move to the weekly charts. The weekly charts, once again, uh, bull sandwich continuation higher, pulled back uh, last week into the 10 exponential moving average, moving higher, uh, trading above this prior resistance at the 1722. And 1722 was the area, was actually the theme this week. Um, and we have gravitated around that 1722 uh, area for the whole entire week. But nonetheless, we finished on a high note, 1727.6. We did manage to have a high of 1733. Uh, and that was in uh, Friday's trading session. We had a really nice uh, start to Russell. Uh, and the daily chart suggests that, yeah, we are into, a, 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 we're into a, a, a trigger formation on the daily chart. And that means a, a, a daily buy trigger at the 1728 zone, uh, which suggests that price may continue higher back at least into this prior high of 1746.3. Uh, and we also have a next projection zone of 17, uh, 1750. And the next tradable void is into the 1760-ish zone. All right, so with that being said, I'm gonna go very quickly down uh, and uh, I'm gonna zoom in on the hourly charts uh, for immediate action. And these are some trading ideas for uh, the overnight trading session on Sunday and going into Monday's uh, cash open. So as long as we hold, and this is back to the m and Dow, as long as we hold the 26100 zone, we're still going to be looking for bounces off these prior resistance areas, moving higher, pull back higher. Definitely the name of the game is going to be breaking the 26250 zone. If this should occur, the 26250 zone breakout, then we will look for the targets that I mentioned before when we analyzed uh, when we analyzed the higher time frame. So definitely room for 
progression higher. So pullbacks into the 26, 100 and even into the 26, 07 D zone are going to be looking a little, are going to be looking higher. All right, the M&E S&P, and we're looking to gain some traction. The in-mini S&P, and this is the flush bar, and uh, this was the news bar, and I always say that news is just a brief interruption into a trend, and the trend resumed. It was a little bit uh, slow, and that is that was what that was because there was not a lot of volume in the market, but definitely we got the uh, we got the trigger, the buy setup that occurred at 2808 progression higher back into the 2915 so any break any flurry into the 15 or into this 17 zone any pullback within this context is going to be viable for a continuation higher let's move on to nasdaq uh, nasdaq on the hourly chart was a little bit more sluggish uh into a uh, friday session and you could see here that it didn't really have a projection higher right now is trading on a minor support at 75.44 where it got the reversal and it triggered the reversal but actually it didn't have a lot of strength for a continuation higher the price being rejected at the 75.85 zone back down so we had a series of three dojis on the hourly bar the problem with this pattern is that if the price is going to break the 75.70 zone we're going to slide and the price is going to slide lower back into the 75.50. So just a heads up for those of you guys that like to counter trend, uh, this is a possible fill of this tradable void. So uh, 75.70 on a breakdown, it can actually go back to 75.50. And on, on, on depending on how the price uh, depending on price velocity and how the price is literally going to push, uh, we may even have a slice through this 50 simple moving average and going back down to 75.20. And I'm not going to ignore the fact of a revisit back into the 7,500. So the whole story stands in this cluster right here, 75.70 to 75.85. If the price is going to manage to push through the 75, let's say 90 zone, the price is going to maintain its trajectory higher back into the 7600, back into the 7620, and back into uh, the prior high that we've mentioned uh, with, target, uh, with targets into the 76, 75, and more. All right, last but not least in, uh, of the indices, uh, this is Russell. Russell had a really nice dynamic push. Finally, a breakout above this prior range that has been painfully there for the whole entire week. And that is for day traders waiting for this break over 25 for that price velocity to take the price higher into that prior high of 1746. Finally, we had the break to the upside. And right now, I love the fact that we're consolidating between the 20 and 25 zone. We're, uh, we're trying to stabilize. And any push again over the 30 zone is going to uh, uh, is going to project a continuation higher for the uh, for the Russell 2000 index back into the 1746 and higher the targets that I've mentioned before. All right, and now let's continue with some commodities. Uh, very good news for my trade in GF and for us in the trading room. We had a really nice run up in feeder cattle. Uh, we had a target of 160 and uh, I kept on mentioning in the trading room. And by the way, the trade was initiated back in February, towards the end of February. So really nice move to the upside. This was a core trade. Uh, we're also nearing a 200 moving average on the weekly chart. So let me just bring the weekly chart right here, but definitely massive, massive profits in feeder cattle. Uh, really nice continuation. This is a pullback buy, really nice cross here 
happening at this cross in mid cluster really nice digestion for higher but as you can see right now we're nearing um we're nearing the 161 zone so targets into 160 and uh, uh were achieved if you're still into this trade uh I, I would look to choke it to, and to take some profits around this area. And the reason for it is that um, we have a pretty extended pattern on the hourly charts. Okay, so I think we had a really massive win and it's really nice to have it, uh, to have it literally um, basically wrapped up and uh, w with these really beautiful gains that we've had. All right. So let's move on to gold. Uh, and I've mentioned gold quite a few times last uh, last week and the week before that. And I said, you know what? Gold is not interesting to me and gold doesn't seem to do anything. It's just clustering here. Uh, we had a trade long here. We took some profits and then this uh, whole entire um, um, 1221 zone is a huge massive resistance it is still downtrending so i'm gonna bring the monthly chart very quickly so you can see what i'm uh, what i'm looking at so this is 2018 march 2018 this is january february march april uh 2018 we've been pretty much topping into this prior resistance high and this is from back in 2016 let's not forget that this pattern is a downtrending pattern and the more we try to break through these lows right here and try to test the 1190s and the 1150s and the 1170s the more we look like a continuation lower so the monthly chart is not encouraging for a continuation higher i had an alert at the 1234 zone for quite some time it was at one point it was a weekly trigger at one point it was a daily trigger at one point right now it is a weekly trigger so i'm not going to do anything in gold unless we break this 1234 zone and this is on the monthly chart the weekly chart it is extremely painful i mean why would i trade gold where there are so many other commodities there are so many other indices and there are so many other stocks and etfs that have better patterns so i'm not going to mess around with uh with gold definitely had a flurry up this week it traded above the prior week's high but again the price got rejected at the 1220 zone so nothing to do here for me at least gold is not an option for me to trade unless it sort of like tries to reverse confirm so i need a confirmation of a trend okay um let's take a look at oil and congratulations for those of you i have received so many comments and so many private messages emails for the trade in for the trade in oil for last week okay so this is the weekly chart and as you can see right here we are still trading within the prior weekly range but there are still a plenty of opportunities from the daily charts so last week i did mention the fact that if the price should trigger above this prior high of 68 dollars it will the price will explode into the 70s and 71. Please take a listen to our prior recording that we have released last week on Sunday morning. Price coming back down, but the reason why I don't like it so much right now is because it has a pretty wide range onto the daily chart and also this indecision bar. So I'm gonna be looking for, uh, I'm gonna be looking to see if the price can manage to break above 70 once again for bullish or if it breaks under 68 we may continue a little bit lower now let me show you something that is very interesting and in fact i'm going to start with the four hour chart this is a bar that was created on friday this is a really huge bar it was a retest of this prior low uh, into a support zone into the 200 moving average and the price reversed quickly after and you could see here at the last four hour candle that we uh, that we pretty much uh, um, wrapped up on Friday, 
it has a new level of support at 68.65 into this prior digestion zone at the 68.60. And if we break the 69 level once again, we may still have a uh, have room to grow higher into the 69.50, back into the 70, but 69.50 is gonna be a big zone. Why? Because it's a confluence zone. We have resistance from these prior lows at 69.50. We also have an overhead resistance from this 20 simple moving average. Continuation, therefore, if the price is gonna digest and slice through the 69.50, we may have a continuation higher back into the 70s, and then once 70s is triggered and tested, boom, back to 71. All right, let's continue with bonds. Okay, and uh, we're going to start, obviously, with the weekly charts. Weekly charts actually finished on a low note at 141.23. Um, I'm still uh, reiterating what I have mentioned last week, and I think these are shorting opportunities. Uh, right now, we're sitting on pretty much support zone right here. So we have a, a, a three tap onto the support zone at 141.17. Uh, and if the price is going to move uh, over 142, okay, in fact, 142 and change, 142, uh, and I would say 142, uh, 26 to 28, uh, we may have a mini rally to the upside into the 143.22. What I would look for, uh, definitely I would look for, um, a continuation higher if this should trigger over 142 uh, let's say 26 i will look on definitely minor time frames for a push to the upside for more of a day trade rather than a swing trade all right let's move on to the daily charts daily charts again illustrating the double tap actually triple tap into the same support zone in between 141 26 and 141 17 uh, and it's still, to me, a very messy pattern. As a day trader, um, there were some opportunities on Friday in the overnight trading session that occurred at 2 a.m. at the Frankfurt Open, uh, but definitely not a trade for the New York trader, uh, for the New York trading session, at least not for me. We had a very sideways rangy day. This was uh, the range. This is the 15-minute chart. This is the rangy day. But definitely the opportunities were, and I keep on mentioning, and I'm just reiterating uh, the fact that I just said, I think this is just uh, uh, another opportunity to short. So we did have the reversal, and this was at the Frankfurt Open at $142, uh, 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 I'm sorry, at $142.06, and we broke this res uh, this support at $141.30, and we had the flurry to the, to the downside. All right, let's uh, take a quick look at copper and natural gas. Uh, copper right now um, had a move lower. Let's put on the weekly charts. Uh, weekly charts uh, um, trading still at the 200 moving average. And in fact, metals are kind of like, uh, sort of like still trading into trouble zones right here. So we have the 2.613, this is where we closed. Uh, we have a doji that is actually pointing a little bit lower. The daily chart actually uh, looked a little better here. The price got rejected into this prior uh, support, now resistance, minor resistance. And uh, we also had the declining 50 simple moving average. We had the short sell trigger uh, at 267.26, that pushed the price right into target at 260. Depending on, and we closed on a low note, so we closed full bar into the red, pretty weak price action, 2.613. So if we're going to break below 2.6, uh, we may have another leg lower, and this leg lower is going to take the price into 2.5 and 2.46 for uh, 2.4646 4, and this these are the projections for uh, copper let's take a look at natural gas and we're going to begin with the weekly charts 
Weekly charts, we had the price rejection at $3 on the dot right there at $3 price rejected. And also keep in mind that we have a lower high right here. So we're starting with the lower high series at $3 and below $3 price was pushed lower. We tested below the, uh, we tested below the 200 simple moving average. I would like to see natural gas react at the 2.70 and I think this is going to be the line in the sand because the way the pattern is setting up, it looks like it really wants to pull lower into the 2.7. So for those of you that are intraday traders, keep in mind that there are favorable patterns that may push we may have one more push just because of uh, uh, just because of Friday's close at least into the 275 274 and 273 level because we're we're trying to stabilize here uh, on this prior support zone but if the price is going to get rejected again at the 2 uh, 278 zone the price is going to come back down all right daily charts uh, daily charts, we have a full completion back into support right here. So again, any mild pullback, the way I see it trade, it may be shortable again. Uh, at the 2.70, that's where I would look for a possible buy, depending on price action. We're going to see how the price is going to manage that area. All right, this is it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget that starting tomorrow, the price will increase for our trading room. Uh, to $299 a month. Currently, it's still $199. If you would like to take advantage and lock in this rate for the life of the subscription, um, then you may do so. The prices are going up on Monday. We have made a lot of changes to the trading room. We have expanded the hours from 9 o'clock, uh, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. We have also included uh, uh, swing trading for stocks. And there are a lot of improvements that we have made to the room. Uh, more hours, more trades, uh, etc. So if you want to give us a try, visit tradeoutloud.com forward slash live trading room. Remember, there are no contracts and no obligations. You could try us for a month.